Did you know that the church teaches that every practicing Catholic needs to go to confession at least once a year? Of course, we also know that we are required to go to confession to absolve any mortal sin that we may be aware of. What's a mortal sin, people say? Do we still believe in that? We do. A mortal sin is a serious sin against God in one of His Ten Commandments. To commit a mortal sin, we need to know that it's wrong. We need to freely choose to do it. And so, what I want to speak to you today about is some of the top ten reasons that I think a lot of Catholics, Catholics give for why they don't go to the Sacrament of Reconciliation. Number ten, I don't know how to go to the Sacrament of Reconciliation. It's been so long, I've forgotten. Well, there's a simple solution to this. Ask a second grader, ask any Catholic second grader how to go to the Sacrament of Reconciliation. They're experts because they're getting ready to go. Now, I say that obviously kind of facetiously, but it really means that, you know, the Sacrament of Reconciliation is something that should be a part of our normal faith lives and our journeys. And that if we can really train second graders how to go to Sacrament of Reconciliation, you shouldn't be afraid to go either. If it has been a long time, just go into the confessional. Tell the priest that it's been a long time since your last reconciliation, and he'll help you through it. Don't let fear of making a mistake or of thinking that you don't know how keep you from being able to experience this really grace that God has given to His church in your life. Number nine, I haven't done anything wrong. Well, if you think you haven't done anything wrong, ask your spouse or your kids or your brothers and sisters or the mailman or the stranger you just met yesterday. You know, we all sin and are deprived of the glory of God, says St. Paul that Jesus wouldn't give us a sacrament of reconciliation if he knew that we didn't need it. But God loves us so much that he knows that we're going to need his healing and his grace to overcome sin in our lives. Imagine saying that we never need to go to a doctor or we never need to go to the dentist. Some people say, oh, I, it, I just don't need to go. But if we have the gift of healing and the gift of forgiveness given to us, certainly God knows that we must need it. And so it's important for us to make an examination of our consciences every day. The church says that it's actually a good spiritual practice every night before you go to bed to give thanks to God for all the good that you've done that day and to ask His forgiveness for any of the bad. I like to tell people that in doing this, we kind of place ourselves in the school of the Holy Spirit who shows us both how God's grace and our own weaknesses are working in our lives. And that if we truly want to be happy and truly come alive, that we come to know what it is we need to ask God forgiveness for. God doesn't convict us of our sins to make us feel bad or to walk around with a guilty conscience all the time. He convicts us in the same way that a doctor diagnoses a patient and says, this is what you need to become well again. So don't use the excuse that I haven't sinned. We've all sinned. We're all sinners. And we're all loved by God in the midst of that. But he doesn't come and say, well, just keep on sinning. I'm going to go ahead and die on the cross and everything will be fine. He says, go and sin no more. I've come so that you may have life and life to the fullest. Number seven, I don't need it, but my husband needs it, or my wife needs it, or my kids need it, or my neighbor needs it, that I'm not the one that is in need. Well, there's one thing that all of those people have in common, you. And Jesus himself says not to stare at the splinter in your neighbor's eye when you have a plank in your own. That we're very good at being able to see the weaknesses of others, but we're even better at making excuses for ourselves. And that even if we are unaware of any sin that we have committed against our brothers and sisters, Jesus wants to be able to go deeper and to be able to change our hearts. You may recall one time when Jesus was being tested, and they were speaking about divorce, and they said, well, Moses allowed divorce to exist. And Jesus says, it was because of your hardness of hearts that Moses had to permit this. But Jesus comes, and he changes our hearts. 
And so even if I'm aware of no grievous sin on my part, I'm certainly aware that God can help me to love my neighbor better, to overcome the anger that is inside of me, the impatience that I have dwelling up inside of me. And so my neighbors may need to go to confession, that's true. But what I need to ask God is to help me even more to love my neighbors better and that I can even draw that and bring that to the sacrament of reconciliation. Number six, it's too inconvenient. Well, you know, a lot of churches now, they only have confession between 4 and 5 p.m. on Saturday afternoons. Sometimes they have it during or after their weekday masses. But, you know, that's just not a good time for me. We can't make it. Well, that may be true. But isn't it odd that with all the activities that we have going on in our lives, soccer practices, school meetings, business meetings, social functions with our friends, somehow we're able to make time for all of those. We arrange our schedules. We come up with shuttle schedules and, and carpools. So sometimes I don't think it's necessarily a matter of being too inconvenient. Is that it hasn't been a priority in our lives anymore. This is one of the seven sacraments that Jesus has given to us for the salvation of our souls. So make time for it. Go as a family once a month or every couple of months. Make it something that is such a priority that you put it on your calendar and say, this is the day that we're going to go and make it happen. If those scheduled times authentically don't work for you and your family, then just call your parish priest and say, I would like to stop in just for a few minutes. I know as a parish priest myself that I'm always overjoyed when people are asking us to celebrate the sacrament because it shows that they're willing to accept God's love and mercy and that they're helping me to live out my priestly ministry. So never feel guilty about asking a priest to be a priest. That's why we're here. And never think that it's going to be too inconvenient. Just make the time for it or ask your priest to help you out. Another excuse that people often have in their lives, when I was 10 years old, a priest yelled at me in the confessional and I haven't gone back. Well, chances are that priest is dead by now. So don't allow the human weakness of one bad experience to deter you from going to the sacrament of reconciliation. Sure, there is that human dynamic that exists, but imagine ever since the 12 apostles, People are going to have a different spiritual connection sometimes with different apostles. But more importantly than that, it's a meeting with Jesus Christ himself in the person of the priest. Father Chris Martin doesn't know how to absolve sins. Jesus Christ, through his priesthood, absolves sins. And that you go and you meet the person of Christ in the confessional. Practically speaking, it's easy then if you have a little anxiety or tension about going to a priest that you know to go to another parish or to go behind the screen or go to a visiting priest. But don't allow your human relationship with one priest keep you from coming to know again the love and the healing compassion of Christ through this great sacrament that he gives to us. Another excuse that people often use in their lives. What does a priest know about my sins? How can he possibly help me? Well, that may be true that a priest's life is different than married people's lives or lay people's lives. But all sin is similar. That impatience for a husband or a wife and a mother and a father may look different than impatience would look for a priest. But impatience is impatience. And that we all know the shortcomings. In fact, the book of Hebrews says that every priest is taken from among men and that he himself is beset by weakness so that he can be patient with those who are struggling in their faith lives. And so what does a priest know about sins? He knows a lot because he's a human being as well. And that we all search for love in broken and shortcoming ways sometimes. So don't shortchange the sacrament by thinking, well, I'm not going to get the help that I need. Because we all are deprived of God's grace in different ways. And we all can help each other overcome it, especially through the sacrament of reconciliation. Another excuse that people use, it's just too embarrassing. Well, it is humbling. But remember that humility is the gateway to holiness. 
and that it's actually through our weaknesses that Christ is able to come and do his most salvific work in our lives. He says that he has come not for the well, but for the sick. And so Jesus doesn't come just to pat us on the back on all the shiny and great areas of our lives. He comes to love us in the midst of our struggles. He comes to take your sins upon himself so that he can set you and I free from them so we can live and love as he created us to live and love. And we all know that it's embarrassing sometimes to have to go to the doctor or to the dentist and to have to reveal ourselves and our weaknesses to them. But we know that they can't help us or heal us and thus we're able to humble ourselves in that way. So too with the sacrament of reconciliation. And we can even see it in the scriptures themselves. It was those people that humbled themselves and fell at the feet of Jesus that came to know his love in the most extraordinary way possible. So embrace the gift that God has given to us. Humble yourself. Pray for the gift of humility and come to know Jesus in that personal and intimate way. Another excuse that people often use What's the use of going to the sacrament of reconciliation if I'm just going to sin again? Well, this is actually a little bit of a dangerous assumption to make because it's actually a form of despair to believe that you can't overcome the sin, to say that God doesn't have enough grace or enough power to help me to stop being angry or to stop being lustful or to stop being greedy in my life. Our God is a God of the impossible. He can do whatever he wants as long as we cooperate with his grace. So don't despair. Don't reside yourself to just live in this continual struggle of sin. But have faith that God can overcome it if you allow him to do his work. The number two reason why people say I can't go to confession or won't, can't I just tell God that I'm sorry in my room? Yes, you can. But telling God I'm sorry and asking God's forgiveness are two different things. Do you know that when you tell somebody I'm sorry, it doesn't, it doesn't demand a response on behalf of that person? But when you ask, will you forgive me, it inherently says, I am waiting for you to respond to me. When we go to the sacrament of reconciliation, we ask, will you forgive me, not only to God, but also to the church, present in both ways through the priest? And that Jesus knows that we are a people who are tangible people. We like to see, taste, touch, hear, and feel things to come to know them. And so Jesus gives us this sacrament so that you can hear the words of absolution, that you know that you have been heard and that your sins have been forgiven, that you can walk out without any doubt whatsoever, that you have been reconciled with your church and with your God. The last reason, and the most dangerous one of all, that some people use an excuse not to go to confession. My sins are too great. God can't forgive me. This is actually a lie that the devil puts into our hearts and our minds. Imagine to be able to stand at the foot of the cross and tell Jesus that wasn't enough to forgive my sins. There is no sin greater than God's love and mercy. In fact, St. Faustina says that all of our sins are but a drop in the ocean of God's mercy. So do not despair and do not for an instant shortchange the love and the mercy and the compassion of Christ who suffered and died for our sins so we could be forgiven and be set free. This is a great gift that God has given to us. Do not make excuses anymore and do not be afraid, but come to know the God who loves you who suffered and died for you, who takes our sins upon himself so that we can live and love as he calls us to live and love. My name is Father Chris Martin, and this is what we believe about the sacrament of confession. So stop making the excuses and get to your church sometime soon. Mm -hmm.